Hello team, today we start very important topic. We are going to learn this topic with the help of many different lessons. Today we start learning Jakarta Persistence API, formerly known as Java Persistence API. Today we are going to learn some basic and key definitions. One of such definitions that we have to learn is ORM. Also, in this lesson we are going to learn what GPA is and what Hibernate is. Probably. These are the key concepts to start with. Also, I am going to give an overview of ORM frameworks. We will hold a comparison of all these different terms in order to understand the difference better. And at the end of the lesson, we are going to talk about GPA advantages and why we have to choose GPA. Let's start our lesson. Let's learn first what ORM is. ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping. In very, very simplified words, this is the process of converting Java objects to database tables and vice versa. In other words, this allows us to interact with a relational database without any SQL. Object Relational Mapping, or ORM, is a programming technique to map application domain model objects to the relational database tables. ORAM is used to develop and maintain a relationship between an object and a relational database by mapping an object state to database column. It also helps to handle various database operations easily, such as inserting, updating, deleting, etc. So, because of ORAM, we can forget about relational databases and don't be bothered how they work inside. Of course, we have to understand how they work. But during the actual coding and programming, we are not bothered about operating database tables. We think only about objects and their structure. And ORM will take care of the rest things that are needed to be done in order to map properly our objects with tables in the database. Is it clear? Now, when we learned what ORM is, let's learn what GPA is. GPA stands for Jakarta Persistence API, formerly known as Java Persistence API. If you don't mind, I will use Jakarta and Java interchangeably during the lesson. If you are wondering about the history of terminology, please refer to the lesson about Java EE in my Java from Zero to First Job course. I dedicated a part of the lesson explaining the history of such naming. The Jakarta Persistence API, first of all, is a specification that defines how to persist data in Java applications. So, it is not ready to use framework, it is not a library, it is just a specification. Set of interfaces, in other words, contracts that should be followed when you want to use Persistence API in Java applications. Taking into account Java has huge community, there was a day when people realized that it would be better to standardize the way how we persist objects in Java instead of having custom approach in each different library. The primary focus of GPA is the ORM layer. GPA is a specification that facilitates object relational mapping to manage relational data in Java applications. It provides a platform to work directly with objects instead of using SQL statements. GPA permits the developer to work directly with objects rather than with SQL statements. The GPA implementation is typically called Persistence Provider. GPA acts as a bridge between object-oriented domain models and relational database systems. There are different implementations of the GPA, persistence providers. Let's hold a brief and very high-level overview of different ORM frameworks. Hibernate Hibernate is one of the most popular Java ORM frameworks in use today. Its first release was almost 20 years ago and still has excellent community support and regular releases. Additionally, Hibernate is a standard implementation of the GPA specification with a few additional features that are specific to Hibernate. Eclipse Link 
Eclipse Link is the open source Eclipse persistence service project from the Eclipse Foundation. The software provides an extensible framework that allows Java developers to interact with various data services, including databases, web services, object XML mapping, and enterprise information systems. Eclipse Link supports a number of persistence standards including Jakarta Persistence API, Jakarta XML Binding, Jakarta Connectors, Service Data Objects. Eclipse Link is based on the top link product from which Oracle contributed the source code to create the Eclipse Link project. Oracle Top Link Top Link is produced by Oracle and is part of Oracle's Oracle Application Server, WebLogic, and OC4G servers. It is an object persistence and object transformation framework. Top Link provides development tools and runtime functionalities that ease the development process and help increase functionality. A rich user interface is possible on TopLink with the help of TopLink Mapping Workbench. This mapping workbench supports graphical mapping of an object model to data model, generation of data model from its object model and vice versa, auto mapping of any existing data models and object models. Apache OpenGPA Apache OpenGPA is a Java persistence project at the Apache Software Foundation that can be used as a standalone Podio persistence layer or integrated into any Java EE compliant container and many other lightweight frameworks, such as Tomcat and Spring. Apache iBotis Other persistence frameworks, such as Hibernate, allow the creation of an object model by the user and create and maintain the relational database automatically. iBotis takes the reverse approach. The developer starts with a SQL database and iBotis automates the creation of Java objects. A significant difference between iBotis and other persistence frameworks, such as Hibernate, is that iBotis emphasizes the use of SQL, while other frameworks typically use a custom query language such as Hibernate Query Language or Java Persistence Query Language. Also, I'd like to say a few words about MyBotis. MyBotis is a fork from iBotis, and nowadays most of iBotis developers moved over to MyBotis too. The iBotis project is currently marked as inactive. Therefore, you should go with MyBotis for new projects and only use iBotis if you are maintaining an existing project which already uses iBotis. So, what should you use? Pure Hibernate or GPA API with Hibernate or any other ORM framework? When we use Hibernate with GPA, we are actually using the Hibernate GPA implementation. The benefit of this is that we can swap out Hibernate's implementation of GPA for another implementation of GPA specification. When you use straight Hibernate, you are locking into the implementation because other ORMs may use different methods or configurations and annotations, therefore we can't switch over to another ORM easily without making changes in our code. If you're already watching this lesson, I assume that you understand abstraction over P principle and such solid principle as dependency inversion. Modules of upper and lower levels should depend on abstractions. That's why it is recommended to use GPA interfaces, annotations, configurations during the implementation in order to not be bounded to only one specific ORM framework. Is that clear? We have just learned a lot of new words – ORM, GPA, Hibernate. Probably you might be confused by this moment in the lesson. Let's understand each definition better by comparing them between each other. ORM – Object Relational Mapping is concept process of converting the data from object-oriented language to relational database and vice versa. 
ORAM is the approach of taking object-oriented data and mapping to a relational data store that is tables in a relational database management system. Hibernate is the implementation of the ORM concept. GPA is the one step above ORM. GPA is the Java EE standard specification for ORM. It is high-level API and specification so that different ORM tools can implement the same interfaces. It is like standard for ORM. Following GPA standard gives the flexibility to developer to change the implementation from one ORM to another. For example, if application uses the GPA API and Hibernate as implementation, this can be changed easily in the future. In future we can switch Hibernate to iBodies if required. In case you wouldn't use GPA, that is case when the application directly logs the implementation with Hibernate without GPA platform, switching is going to be extremely complicated task to do, because a lot of code would need to be rewritten and retested. Is it more clear now what is the difference between all these terms? Even in case something is still not clear, please do not hesitate to ask your questions below the video and I will be happy to answer. Let's continue. Let's summarize GPA advantages and let's answer the question, why we need to use GPA? Among GPA advantages I'd like to highlight the following ones. No need to create SQL statements if we use GPA, while you definitely can if you need some specific optimization or customization. But in general, with the help of GPA we have possibility to operate with objects only, without working with the database directly. Database independent. If you watched my course about SQL, then you should know that different relational databases may have different SQL dialects. Using GPA you don't have such problem. The programming becomes easy by considering the object relational mapping and database access processing. Avoiding of unnecessary queries. The basic idea is to delay all write operations as long as possible so that multiple update statements can be combined into one. Your GPA implementation, therefore, stores all entities that were used within one transaction in the first level cache. In the course, we are also going to learn different cache levels and I am going to explain you how they work. Using the GPA annotations you can save your time for defining and architecting tables in the database. In the course I am going to show you how to create tables based on the entities defined. Using GPA you can easily switch different ORM implementations. These are the main GPA advantages that helps developers a lot. That's all what I wanted to share with you in this lesson. Let's recap what we have learned today. Today we learned what ORM is. Now you know what GPA is. And also we reviewed different ORM frameworks, including Hibernate. At the end of the lesson we learned GPA advantages. That's all for this lesson. Thank you all for your attention. Have a great day and see you in the next lesson.